Power 92, number one in the streets. Your boy, Hot Rod, the lid pit in full effect. And it feels like December 18th, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> because my brother is back in the building. Chance the Rapper, what's yeah. up? <laughs> it's the big day. Yo. I, I said it was the big day on Power, but the big day is out. It's the big day every day. Oh, okay. yeah, then the big day is out. Yeah, get my album. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the joint is out. The big day. The big day. The big day. <laughs> Man. Taylor been in here recently. Been in here, uh, oh, got my brother in here. I, I, I love, I love you. I love how the way you have your team with you. Uh, I got shout. Out. I, I want to kick this off by shouting out your whole team, man. Yo, Social words, man. open mic. Uh, thank you for letting me be a part of that. Thank Reese, you, man. Being a great host, Taylor. Uh, he didn't visit the show about what three, four times this year. Like, and you know. Man. Definitely, you've been you've been blessing the show and everything, oh, yeah. blessing me with a whole bunch of opportunities. So I want to use this bro. time to thank you for everything, bro. Thank you, man. Yeah. You a good friend, though. <laughs> nah. We can do that on the radio. They can't nah. even see us shaking hands, bro. Well, you my boy, it, yo. nah. you my you my guy for real. And for real. Like, we go back all the way to what twenty. 15, 16? Yeah, yeah. When we did 13? the I don't know, how 10 long. day. When we did 10 day. Oh, yo, that is a long time ago. So, oh, yeah, we was always so, on a breeze. Yeah, Back everybody. when she was on a breeze. The, uh, that, that's like the, 2012, the takeover, to be so. honest. And that was, you You came in with CDs. Yeah. So that's what the, And now I got a real CD. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> with diamonds on it, though. You know what I'm saying? With, with diamonds. diamonds in the joint. <laughs> Wait, show the ring. And I got the show diamonds on the ring. <laughs> hey, can y'all hear how loud my diamonds is dancing on the radio right now? It's an acapella little breakdown, though. It's... You know, it's just VVs all around, a little eternal bracelet, you know, a little eternal, look, eh. and, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't like oh, the way wait, it's going. Oh, see that. Cause wait, I see it. that. But I don't want it to outshine because this is forever right here, you know what I'm saying? And congrats, bro. Thank congrats you, man. on that, man. Yes, I'm married. Beautiful I'm a married wedding. man, yo. Beautiful You know me wedding. for a long time, and I'm married, so <laughs> it's crazy. Man, hey, congrats on that. Congrats on the album. Uh, Got to ask you, why did you name it The Big Day? The Big Day. It was because it's based on... The biggest, the best day of of my life, and uh, so yeah, me and Kirsten, we got married, and we got married technically last year, and you know you got to go to city hall and all that stuff. But we had our wedding. Oh, the big day was March 9th. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm <laughs> thinking my wife had smacked me like through the microphone. I don't even remember the date. I think it was like March 9th. But anyways, yeah, we got married on March 9th, and uh, and it was the most beautiful thing I ever been a part of. Like I, top to bottom, she put together the wedding, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't have, I just showed up, I just kind of came. But when I got there, it was just so beautiful, the floral arrangements, you know what I'm saying? Like, just like how she did the decor, like, it was, it was, it was the outside, and then it was, you know, like the reception inside. And when we did the reception, yo, I'm telling you, it was... Some of the hardest percolators you ever seen in your life, Joe. Well, you put, you put snippets of videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can't, it's like, that's that's what the album is for, is like to give you like a real sneak peek into how we all felt that day. And it's and it's so many different elements that go into getting married, Joe. When you get married, Damn. you think about every single day of your life before that and, and, and everything possible afterwards. But it's like, you're still relishing in that moment and you hoping that it doesn't end. And even when it's done, it's like, it's just like the starting point for eternity. Man, he, he, yo, man, he's selling it to me. I got to go. Yo, I gotta, you better get married. You know, <laughs> I ain't got to go now. Yeah, she's she 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 listening. She's probably watching. She's listening. Now I got to get a whole handful. when I. She's listening. She's definitely yeah. listening because she's definitely probably watching. And I'm probably like, damn. She's like, you heard what Chan said? I'm like, oh. But nah, hey. <laughs> I, oh yeah, <laughs> he's talking about my, 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 uh, hey, this album. Yeah, this album though, uh, <laughs> it's super fire, and I, you know, I, I definitely hit, Thank hit you, you on the message because the first track like really just caught my attention. We not out here pleasing everybody. Yeah. Like you got John Legend on there. Uh, you got so many people that, and I'm, I like how you did it because you didn't, you didn't, you didn't put like, hey, this is future and this, this is your album. Yeah. This is you, and you know, people on the project. But what was one of your old favorite tracks like that you just like? I just gotta listen to this all the time. So it's gonna throw people off because there's so many joints like Slide Around and Handsome with Meg Thee Stallion and you know I just sing that. I'm singing my head. Newman, all, it's, <laughs> it's got all these joints, but to me, there's this one record. It was the last record to get made for the album. It's called Town on the Hill. We're not gonna play it on here because it's so slow. But they just started playing it. We can play it. We can play it tonight too. We can play it tonight too. It's a it's a little bit. It's a vibe because it's all right. So check this out. When I got married, Joe. And it's going to sound crazy, but a big part of why I was getting married was because that was what 
God was telling me to do. And I know that sounds crazy, but it was for real. And it was like, I was like, all right, so I got to get this done. And then, and then there's this thing in the, there's this thing in the Bible where they talk about how you, when you, when you do certain good deeds, you do them so that people could attribute it to the Father. It's not about, you know what I'm saying, yourself getting a better chance of getting to heaven or, you know, like your good deeds aren't, ain't what takes you there. It's like the good deeds is just to show people who you learn it from. And so when I did, when I did get married, it was crazy because there were so many people coming up to me. I got a little, a lot of different demographics of my stuff. You know what I'm saying? There's okay. celebrities, there's my cousins, there's white people, black people. You know what I'm saying? It's, like, <laughs> it's, it's different. It's a mix of people there. And I'm getting all these different people that are coming up to me and they're like, yo. Know, because we had we had Kirk Franklin and a couple other people come yeah, do like a little that. you know a little mini concert. You know, I'm telling you the, wait, the what song, was wait, 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 what song did he do? Cracking. What song did he do? He did melodies from heaven. We had uh, I need you to survive. Hezekiah Walker came right. in. We had Fred Hammond do. Uh, he did no no weapon or 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 uh, he did something. Oh, you are the living word. Woo! Y'all gotta get that video. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? We uh, there were all these people coming up to me from all these different backgrounds, different people that I knew. And they was coming to me and they was like, yo, man, this is going to sound weird, but I feel like your wedding, over all your music that you ever did, over all the things I ever seen you did, this wedding is making me believe in God. And that's that's heavy, yo. And it wasn't that, and I didn't understand or get to even come in contact with the scripture that it's Matthew, I think, 5.11. It talks about how you want to be a town on the hill. You want to be a light of the world so that people see you yeah. and they be like, I get it, God. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what that song is about. And it's a real short song. It sounds it's different from every other song on the album, but Town on the Hill, Joe, when I listen to it, it's like it's like a praise and worship song, but in the future. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's, it's like, uh, you know, uh, Bonnie Vare and uh, Francis and the Lights, like kind of like, you know, like a little bit more electronic, futuristic sound, but it's like, it, I feel like that's the one. No, I can't wait to everybody hear it again. I mean, I, I've been riding toward a lot, and I'm glad you said, you know, stuff like uh, just showing people the light and everything. You show people the light a lot. Little do you know, I mean, I'm pretty sure you know with Open Mic. Yeah, and, man. And, and open I, Mic, I yo. Love, thank you for Open hey, Mic, yo. No, nah, thank you for that. Like I say, thank you for letting me be involved with it. Reese, man. Reese and Co-hosted host with him and everything. Uh, see it. All of them, like, it's super dope. And like I say, like, you inspire so many young people in there. Um, and I want to take it back to begin the open mic, brother Mike. Yeah. Who who was he to you? Man. So anybody that de- that didn't get to meet brother Mike, um, he's just he was everything. He's just a real man. That's like that's the first way I would I would put it. Uh, so basically, uh, we used to go to this spot, this little after school spot downtown, and people from all over the city would come to it. It's called U Media, and you would go in and they offer everything. So you will, you come in and they'll help you with your homework, you know what I'm saying? But they'll also, like, teach you how to make beats. And, like, they had a free recording studio and they had video games and they had just a place where you could kick it, you know what I'm saying? Like, just come in and, and chill. And uh, Brother Mike was one of the the uh, the mentors in the space and he taught me how to use the studio and taught me his production. And then he started this thing called Lyricist Loft. And it was an open mic at U Media that myself came out of. Uh, so it's me, Vic Mensa, uh, No Name, Saba, Mick Jenkins, um, Tay, Reese. Uh, Reese you, it's a, a lot of people in the city uh, came through there and basically at, at a young age of 16 was getting free studio time, free, you know, <laughs> and, that, and, the, and those spaces still exist. Ten, uh, you, you media's having like a 10-year parade or picnic or something coming up, and I'm going to definitely pull up. Yep. Um, but... Uh, Brother Mike specifically, like, through his program, taught me, like, how to rap. Like, that was those were my first shows. The, the way that I created my momentum to, like, be able to eventually sell out Reggie's, which doesn't sound crazy now, but at a time when they didn't even book hip-hop shows and none of the local hip-hop shows would sell out, I got to a point where I could do that because I would keep coming back to this open mic weekly and I would keep performing and I would keep getting people's names and suggestions on what they liked and what they didn't like. And then I would burn these CDs in the library for free <laughs> and give them out to people. And then eventually I start coming around with tickets. And I'd be like, I got this little show. I'm doing a showcase. I'm doing woo-woo. And they, and they would come. And I built a fan base. 
And and Brother Mike taught me how to cultivate that fan base. He taught me how to take, you know, real pride in my in yeah. my craft in terms of performing. Because I used to be coming in that joint, rapping, forgetting my lyrics, freestyling, performing the same song every week. I remember one time he was like, yo, if you come back and try and perform that song next week, you can't rap. Like, you got to oh, wow. keep coming with new content. And so he taught me just a lot of things. And then a lot of people know, sadly, he passed away in, I think, 2013. Um, and, yeah, so it's, it's been, it, 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 was a, it was a rough thing, but what it did was it reconnected me and a lot of those people, Malcolm London, uh, No Name, uh, Mick Jenkins, Saba, all the social works people, Sid, uh, such and such, Reese. Yeah. And, and we got together and started a new open mic under social works called Open mic, named after Brother Mike. Mike yep. And, uh, it, you know, it happens once a month. Uh, it's hosted by yourself, Hot Rod, and Reese. And any kids that, you know, got a high school ID could come in for free and spit their piece and, or, or dance or rap. Or so you, we got a lot more comedians now, apparently. Man. But the comedians are killing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But young talent, what the best thing that it does is it creates their own scene you know what i'm saying like that's how you thrive that's how we got up was mm -hmm. we created a scene where we all supported each other and we all did the same shows and we grew because people could all see us in, in one space and we could see each other and how each other were growing to help each other that's what that space is i keep hitting the microphone <laughs> no, i good? keep hitting the microphone i don't know if they can hear that but <laughs> man a open mic is a beautiful thing and thank you for keeping that going oh yeah we definitely gonna keep it going we're gonna go up live number two on billboard number two on the billboard <laughs> I got to point out, he going to make me point it out. My brother's been gassing me all week. Hey, I'm, I'm, gas I'm the Look. first independent artist ever. Woo! 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 And it's not even about the numbers, it's about the fans. So shout out to y'all, man, for keeping me motivated, yo. Shout out to Snap. Guy, yo, yes. for ordering my steps, you know what I'm saying? Oh, it yes. sounds like we lit in here, we haven't drank anything yet. But <laughs> the music water. is definitely, y'all got that vibe. Y'all be turning me up. It's, so all water. it's definitely <laughs> aqua in my cup. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, and I uh, got a shout out to Good Morning America, too. Kill shout it. out to Good Morning America. Thank you guys for allowing me to hit that stage. Uh, the full videos out. That was just an amazing experience. Just cause, you know what I'm saying? Like in, in real life, like the spaces that they allow rappers to occupy is very small. And even if we get to late night, that's like a small percentage of us. But getting to be, you know what I'm saying, on daytime TV, Good Morning America, mm -hmm. alone, and them giving me a whole hour to do a concert, yo, and let me do six songs from the joint and have, you know, a thousand fans. Let's hold up. And they and shout out to the fans that woke up at it was like three a.m. or four a.m. to come see me rap in the morning. Um, it was a transcendent experience though, and it allows you to know who really rocks with you. So shout out to y'all, yo, and y'all keep me going. And uh, and yeah, man, shout out to Good Morning America. That's right, we back, we back, we back. The chance take over the big day, the big takeover. We got. Well, we, we about going to. Uh, what eternal, we going to? man. Eternal. Eternal. All right. Before I get into that, I definitely got to ask a question uh, because yeah. you definitely donated like, over a million yeah. to yeah. mental mental health issues. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like it's a step inside. I'm, well, I'm listening to the question. This sounds. Very, it's a very serious question. I'm yeah. Sorry. So with this, uh, you got the life is beautiful. So, what what is this mental health issue like? What is what is it meant to you? So I mean, honestly. So, I'm sorry, I'm trying to focus. The, uh, it's, it's really just about the fact that that stuff... Yeah, they can't even hear the beat, can they? Yeah. Oh, that is live on the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, all right, let me stop laughing. Social Works uh, partnered up with all the different mental health resources spots uh, throughout the, the city, the county, and the state. And what we happened to do was we created a huge directory and basically a Yelp-like app that people can go in and find every piece of mental health or mental wellness um, treatment or resource uh, on a state level, uh, private level, free level, you know, unconditional uh, or unconventional such as, you know, like karate classes that teach you how to be mindful or the there's like uh, hip hop stuff like Church on the Nine. There's so many different organizations. So we created a bigger space for them and then we just created a new cohort where every year we'll give a million dollars and spread it among 10 different mental health facilities so that they could get all the resources that they needed. 
Nice. Nice, man. Hey. <laughs> man. <laughs> much needed. <laughs> much needed. Because a lot of people with PTSD, man, for real, like, they are dealing with a lot in neighborhoods. People get killed. Yeah, yeah they got, a, they got killed. a TV show out. Uh, the Taylor was just, you was just uh, talking about a Europa. Uh, oh, Euphoria. Yeah, Euphoria. Yeah, there you go. go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and shout out to G Herbo also uh, and Joe Budden, who yeah. both been. Uh, really helpful behind the scenes recently mm -hmm. and uh, we're gonna make a full announcement at our social work summit that we do every year where we announce how the money's going with the CPS thing and with the warmest winter with the homeless population mm -hmm. and kids of the kingdom the you know the vacation Bible school we run so we got you know we got all these things that we announce so we're gonna give you guys an update on that in November at the social work summit you know Davis what you got for me man, man? eternal man I was riding to this me and my wife you know what you was talking about in that joint, bro. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's clearly obvious what you was talking about, but talk to the people what that was. Bro. Yeah, man. We live in a culture right now where everybody's scared, man. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it feels like you don't want to get too far into anything, any type of relationship, because you got these trust issues. Right. And we start to pride ourselves on being, you know, invulnerable mm -hmm. and, and impenetrable. And everybody wants, you know, to be at, at the very most a side piece, because you don't want to owe anybody man. too much. <laughs> This one right here. Side chicks can't dance to this. They can't. Side uh, can't dance to this. And so we're going to step it out just like this for Chicago and Chicago only. This is Power 92. Yeah. Hey, so before we get into this next track, um, it's a track that I definitely wanted to play, and I'm glad I got both of y'all win here. Rue. Yeah. Can, can we can we talk about that song a little bit? Like, yeah. What did that song mean to y'all hopping on the track together? Like Y'all was actually going in. Spin, what's up? Yeah, I mean, for me <laughs> personally, it it was uh, it was a huge like step for me because I feel like me and Taylor had worked together before the fame or whatever, and we I I did some songs on his projects, but we had never had like a song that really I felt like yeah. even with even with broad shoulders, like we addressed our own relationship, but like talking about fatherhood, talking about um, our relationships is how, in terms of how close we gotta be in order to, yeah. to 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 maneuver through this this world as it is in this industry. Like, it, I think it, it set off even a better relationship between me and my brother beyond Definitely. rapping and stuff. That's my take. Yeah, I mean, my thing is, I guess, just like what Shan said, I feel like it was the first opportunity to really like make a song that kind of explain the narrative behind both of us making music and not even so much us making music but also gave our fans like an insight on that relationship and I think our relationship is really important because I got so many different fans and people that are like yo broad shoulders is blah 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 for blah for me for you know what I'm saying for me and my sister or me and my brother or me and my dad yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. and I feel like with Rue you really got the explanation of you know what I'm saying really who we are and then I felt like the other thing too is like it was um present that you know both of us lyrically working together on a project and working together on a song like we could do something that can take people and show them an experience you know what i'm saying rather than just being a track so you know i was really thankful to be on a project you know what i'm saying and you know that's my little spill on that joint <laughs> <laughs> yeah. with it. we definitely gotta get that record clean yeah we gotta, so we get, that. Yeah, yeah, we we gotta get, get that, that clean record. record but it's one other thing i just gotta point out about that about that joint i i completely Never got a chance to, to to explain how important it is that you get every vibe from the wedding. So you get your turn up, you get your dance, you get your, you know what I'm saying, your little juke, you'll get your little whatever you need out of the album. But, man, you need those real moments, yo. And me and my brother, we brothers, so we be going at it sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And my dad had a real good conversation with us on my bachelor's party. And my dad did come with us to my bachelor's party. He didn't come to all parts, but he came to, he <laughs> flew out with us. And he had a conversation with us, and at the end of the day, I kill for my brother like this, like mm -hmm. not, and they don't even gotta be that serious. So, it, it, having that relationship and having that solidified by the time I get married is one of the most important things that I had to get done. And now we got it done. Mm -hmm. But we should still dance because I think we got this. What's, it, what's this going on? Because this joint got me. This joint got me like this. Somebody in the car should. Hey, what you got, man? Mine's the commercial right now. <laughs> This right here, Bowden Flossin, man. Oh, yeah, that's that Bowden Flossin off that new The Big Day by Chance the Rapper featuring Shawn Mendes on Power 92. Ooh, yes, it is. <laughs> I just got to say, man, shout out to one of the realest businesses, period, in Chicago. Joe, you don't know how many people came out of Power 92. Shout out to Jay Allen. Shout out to Bam. Shout out to 
Hi, Ron. Shout out to, to Bree for bringing What's me back here. Yeah. 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 I know y'all got love for past co-workers, Joe. Yeah. Shout out to Bree. Shout out to everybody. This is a 100% black-owned independent radio, and it's number one in the streets, number one in Chicago, Power 92. I appreciate y'all, and y'all gonna hear this song a lot more, because we in rotation now. <laughs> Hold on, we're gonna close the show with this, so I just gotta ask you, as being an independent artist, what's some advice you can give to these artists coming up? Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, here's a few little gems real quick. Wait. Number one, don't sign no deals. Don't sign a recording deal. Don't sign a publishing deal. Don't sign a distribution deal. Don't sign a, a production deal. Don't sign anything that puts you in a position where you owe somebody later. Mm. Number two, make sure you get one of them little distribution services that's online and you pay $10 and you can have your music on SoundCloud, on Tidal, on Spotify on Apple Music and every place that your fans need to get it to. So the third and final thing that I'm going to leave you with, and this is going to sound a little crazy, okay. go with God because this industry not built on God, but he definitely will push you through and all around and on top of this joint. And that's my spiel. Sarah, and the album is out. Make sure y'all go get it. The big day. Uh, we're going to keep from in this. Hey, we're going to go crazy. You already know this is home, bro. Anytime you want to come up here, family, Taylor, Reese, Reese, you next. Reese, right? Y'all heard Reese. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be out of here like two weeks. And then, hey, Life is Beautiful tour out of Vegas. Life is Beautiful. The tour is on sale right now at ChanceRaps.com. You can get your tickets. Uh, we already sold out one of them United Centers. Buy your tickets now. And, uh, and and keep us in your prayers. My wife and I are having our baby in a week. So, yes, you know what I'm saying? Keep us in your prayers. And, and Power 92, keep rocking, Joe. We're not, we're not a shower joint. Let's you know do it, man. <laughs> Because I do got muscles. <laughs>